Well, good morning and welcome to Faith Factory, where we make disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm Mr. Doug. And I am Mops. And we're going to have all kinds of fun today. Mr. Here Doug. At... Yes, Mops? Is it time? Is it time for what? For the joke of the day. Time for the... I guess it is yes. time for okay. the joke of the day. All right. Okay. What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? I don't know. What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. <laughs> <laughs> a stick. Yeah, well, that, that's a good one, Mops. That's a very good one. Hey, I think it's time for us to sing our theme song. Okay. Would you lead us, Mops? Yes. This is the place. Let me get the words right in here. All right. And we'll try something new today. Every time we sing the word place, you can hop in place or clap your hands, whichever you like. So hop on place or clap your hands. You're gonna start the music machine. Okay, let me get the music machine going here. So remember, on the word place, you hop or clap your hands. place to be together. This is the place to learn and have some fun. This is the place for friends and family, together forever as one. This is the place to be together. We've got a lot to do before we're done. This is the place to help each other. Everyone did such a that great a job. Fun. Yes, and you hopped. That was great. All right. All right. Bye bye, words. Hey, Mops, I was at the hardware store yesterday. Oh, fun place. And oh, it is a fun place. And I heard some news. I don't know if you've heard this, but uh, I guess on Friday, there were some boys walking on the sidewalk downtown, not too far from Faith Factory here, and they found a bag filled with money. Oh, they were rich. They, well, they had all this money and they looked inside and uh, some of the boys said, finders keepers. And so they were going to keep the money and they were all excited and started talking about all the different things they were going to buy with the money. But one of the other boys in the group said, no, it's not finders keepers. Somebody lost this money and they need this money. We need to take it to the police station so they can find the owner. And one of the boys said, well, why would you want to do that? And this young man who thought the money should be taken to the police station said, well, it's the right thing to do. And so he convinced them and they did. They took it to the police department and they turned it in. And it turned out that it belonged to one of the shop owners downtown. And he had it, was taking it to the bank and lost it. And then he'd been searching all over for it. And he was so glad that the boys had found it and turned it into the police and they got it back to the owner. They did the right thing. Yes. And doesn't it make you feel good when you do the right thing or you hear about somebody doing the right thing? Yeah. The right mm -hmm. thing. It's so, so important. Well, in our Bible story today, we're going to learn about some boys who didn't do the right thing, but we can learn from them, from their mistake. So it's time for us to get out the, the great, great big Bible. Bible. All right, here it is. The great big Bible. 
and let me open it up. All right, and we're reading today in the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 29 through 34. Okay, here we go. As Esau and Jacob got older, they liked doing different things. Esau was good at hunting and loved doing things outside, and Jacob liked to stick around home and do things on his own. Because Jacob stayed at home a lot, he learned to cook with his mother. One day he made some of his delicious stew that everyone liked. Esau had been out early in the morning hunting and was very hungry. He was so hungry that he could smell the stew from a far way off. As soon as Esau got home, he asked Jacob, Quick, let me have some of your stew. I'm starving. Jacob replied, If you give me your birthright, you can have some of my stew. Mr. Dodd? Oh, yes, Mom. What's a birthright? Oh, that's a very good question. A birthright is a special privilege that was given to the oldest child in the family because they would become the leader of the family when the parents passed away and then they would get double the inheritance or they would get double of what the parents left behind, like money or animals or land. Oh, so did Esau give Jacob his birthright? Oh, let's keep reading and find out. Jacob said, if you want my stew, you must give me your birthright. You must give me all your rights as the firstborn son. Esau said, I am so hungry, I'm gonna die. Please give me some stew to eat. But Jacob said, first you have to give me your birthright. So Esau made the trade. The birthright meant that the brothers' places in the family were now switched. Jacob would be the leader in the family now. Esau got his bowl of stew, but he did not treasure his birthright. I don't think Jacob and Esau did the right thing. You're right, Mops, they didn't do the right thing. Jacob, the right thing for him to do would be to give his brother some stew. He was hungry and just share the stew, but instead he said, no, you gotta trade me your birthright. When someone is in need, we're to help them and not figure out what we can get out of it, not be greedy or figure out how we can get something for it. And then Esau didn't do the right thing. He should have just spoke up and said, no, that, that uh, birthright is a special privilege that I have and comes with responsibilities and, and I need to do that myself. I can't trade that away. So both the boys did the wrong thing. It's hard sometimes to do the right thing, but God wants us to always do the right thing. Well, I want to invite a friend that was here a few weeks ago back today. His name is Hank. Hank, where are you? You're right over here. Here's Hank. All right. Here's Hank. And uh, remember last time Hank had a word he wanted to share with us? All right. And uh, you see the word forming right there in Hank's mouth? Do you see it right here? See it right there, the word? It's forming right there. I think it's starting to get stuck. Ooh, 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 ooh. There it is. There it is. There it is. I got it. I got it. Oh, all right. Let's see what the word is. The word is responsible. Responsible. Say that with me. Responsible. Now, what does it mean to be responsible? Well, first of all, it means that you make good decisions. Second, it means you act on those decisions and do the right thing. And third, it means you show care for people around you. So you make good decisions, you do the right thing, and you care for people around you. And you are responsible, and God wants us to be responsible. Now, were Jacob and Esau responsible? Nah, not really, were they? Did they make a good decision? No, both of them made the wrong decision. Did they do the right thing? No, they both did the wrong thing. Did they care for other people? No, they were both just worried about themselves. Jacob wanted the birthright for himself, and Esau was so focused on his stew that he gave the birthright away. So God wants us to be responsible. So remember, to be responsible, you do what? You make good decisions, you act on those decisions and do the right thing, and then you care for people around you. Let's say this together one more time. Responsible. All right. Well, we're going to play a game today to help us remember what it is to be responsible and to do the right thing. 
Is fact, it game time? Yes, it okay. is game time. I'm glad you're here, Mops. This name of this game is Doing the Right Thing. So let me grab the game. All right, over here. Now this game is similar to one that we played a few weeks ago. I have some slips of paper here in this bin, and I'm going to read off each slip of paper. And if this is something that shows that you're doing the right thing, you're gonna take one step forward. If it's something that's not the right thing, you're gonna take one step back. So everybody stand up, everybody standing up, okay. Now you're gonna use the chair or the table or couch or something where, from where you're watching as your base and go over and stand right by and put your hand on it. Okay, and remember, if this is something that shows you're doing the right thing, you take a step forward. If it's not the right thing, you take a step back. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, this says, carry something for someone who has their hands full. That would be doing the right things. Take a step forward. All right. Go out to play without first asking your parents. No, oh, that's not the right thing. So everybody take a step back. All right. Here we go. Help your parent set the table. Oh, that's the right thing. So you take a step forward. Okay. You call your friends names like ugly or stupid. Oh, that's not the right thing at all. Take a step back. All right, here we go. Do your homework and hand it in on time. Oh, that would be taking a step forward, wouldn't it? All right, clean your room. Oh, that's the right thing, so take a step forward. All right, take your brother or sister's toy without telling them. That's not the right thing, is it? So take a step back. All right, help your parent wash the car. Oh, that's a good thing. That's the right thing. That Take can a step be fun, forward. Too. That can be fun. Yeah, that's right. All right. Make a gift for someone. Oh, that's taking a step forward, isn't it? Because that's a good thing to do. All right. Here we go. Keep a promise. Well, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? So take a step forward. All right. Here we go. Get angry at your mom and dad because they, they didn't buy you something you wanted. No, that's not the right thing. Step back. All right, here we go. Write a thank you letter. Oh, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? Take a step forward. All right. Visit a friend who needs cheering up. Oh, that's the right thing, so take a step forward. All right. Point at someone and laugh at them. Oh, that's not the right thing, is it? Take a step back. All right. Walk away when someone tries to start a fight with you. Well, that's the right thing to do, isn't it? So take a step forward. All right. Here we go. You give up your seat on the bus for an older person to sit down. That's the right thing to do. Good job. All right. You tell your family that you love them. Oh, that's the right thing to do. All right. Take a big step forward. All right. Do something that your parents have told you not to do. That's not the right thing, is it? Take a step back. All right. Poke or pinch someone. No, that's not the right thing to do. Step back. All right, and here's our last one. Give some money to charity. It means to an organization that helps people. That would be the right thing to do. Yes, mm -hmm. take a step forward. Now I want you to turn around and look where you started and where you are now and see how far you can get, how far you can go when you're always trying to do the right thing. And I hope you'll remember how important it is to do the right thing. All right, well, I had fun with that game. Did you enjoy I it, Mops? Too. That was a fun, fun game. All right, well, we want to work now on our Bible memory verse. Let me grab it here. We've been working on this last week and we'll be working on it this week and then next week, all right. Let me just hold it up there so you can see it. All right. All right, let's read it together. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2. All right, these are the promises that God gave to Abraham. And we're seeing how these promises are being fulfilled, how God is keeping his promise. He made this promise to Abraham and Sarah, and then he made this promise to Isaac and Rebekah, and he's making this promise to Jacob and Esau, 
and their children. And so it's a great, great promise. So let's read it together again. And I do hope we can memorize it, okay? Let's work on that. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you. I will make your name respected and you will be a blessing. Genesis 12, 2. Where our craft today goes right along with this special promise that God gave to Abraham and passed on to his family. You can go to our church website at wadsworthumc.com and there's a button there for Faith Factory activity pages. You can just click on that and print out the activity pages. There's three of them there. There's one for preschoolers, one for younger elementary, one for older elementary. So you can print out whatever age you are. And then there's also our craft project that you can print out. And you'll find it, it looks like this. It says, God keeps promises. Now it's not colored. We colored it in first and that's what I want you to do. After you print it out, it'll be black and white and you can color in the letters. God keeps promises. Then once you've colored it in, you can go outside and get some leaves if they're dry, or you can use some colored paper, whatever you'd like, and you're gonna glue it around the words. And so it will look like this. I just tore some construction paper and glued it on there, made a little frame, and you can decorate it however you want to. And then you, the important thing is then you hang it up and it reminds you that God does keep his promises. God made promises to Abraham and his family so, so long ago. And God makes promises to us in God's word, the Bible. And God will keep every single one of those promises. So have fun with that. Hang it up to remind you that God does keep his promises. All right. Well, Mops, you know what? I think it's time for our quiz. All right. Shall I grab the Quizinator? The Quizinator. All right. Let me grab the Quizinator right here. Okay. All right. I got it right here. And let me set it for Genesis. All right. And turn it on. And let's see. We've got, here we go. All right. So some questions are forming on the screen in the back. All right. And uh, remember, if this, if what I share is true, you're going to raise your hand. And if it's not true, you keep your hand to your side, okay? So are you ready? Are your moms, are you ready? I'm ready! Boys and girls, are you ready? Moms and dads, are you ready? Grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, are you ready? <laughs> All right, here we go. Number one, Jacob and Esau shared the birthright since they were twins. Hmm, no, they did not share the birthright, so that's hands down. All right. Esau traded his birthright for a bowl of stew. Yes, he did. He was very hungry and he traded it for a bowl of stew. The birthright was always supposed to go to the youngest child. Now that would be hands down. Who was it supposed to go to? The oldest child. All right. Esau's birthright was something he had to wait for. Hmm, think about that. Yeah, he did have to wait, didn't he? Yes, he didn't get it right away. He had to wait for it. Okay. Number five. Jacob valued the birthright more than Esau. That would be hands up, yes, because Esau just gave it away. All right. Number six, Jacob tricked Esau to get his birthright. No, that would be hands down, wouldn't it? Because he didn't trick him. He just said, give it to me. And Esau finally did. So he didn't trick him at all. All right. Number seven, Jacob did the right thing in getting his brother to trade his birthright for a bowl of stew. Jacob did the right thing. That would be hands down when Jacob did not do the right thing. All right, number eight. God always wants us to do the right thing. That would be hands up when God does always want us to do the right thing. And number nine. God loves us even when we do the wrong thing. Yes, hands way, way up. Even when we do the wrong thing, God still loves us. All right. Well, you all did a great job on the quiz today. We've had a lot of fun. And before we go, let's pray together. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes, fold our hands, and let's talk to God. Dear God, thank you for this time that we've had at Faith Factory today and how we've learned about how important it is that we always do the right thing, that we make good choices, we do the right thing, and we show love to those around us. And the example that we have in the Bible is an example of people doing the wrong thing. But we can learn so much from stories like this and help us to always do 
the right thing. I want to pray for everyone who's watching. Pray that they're growing in their faith during their time here at Faith Factory. And we look forward to when we can be together again. And we pray all this now in the name of Jesus. And all God's children said in a loud and mighty voice, Amen! Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye!